Hello everyone, welcome back to this channel. Today we're going to look into chapter 5 of A-level physics, work, energy and power. And this is the work cloud for the chapter. It includes terms that you will learn throughout the videos. And before I continue, just a reminder that you can always subscribe to this channel. We are currently sitting at 27.6. Let's try to push it to 30. Thank you. This is our chapter outline for the day. Now let's move on to work done. It's when a force causes an object to move in the direction of the force. I underline direction of the force because it matters so much when it comes to calculating work done. The amount of work done depends on two things, the force that you apply and the distance and the unit is true. So let's an easy question here. A person pushes a box with 15 Newton over 10 meter, how much work is done? You can just substitute the value 10 Newton multiplied by 10, you would have gotten 500 true. Here we have some example on when work is done and when work is not done, so you can see that these are the scenarios where work is done because the object moves in the direction of the force. So in this case, it will be the gravity, gravity, and this will be the force exerted by the lifter. So here we have some scenarios which work is not done. So this lady is carrying a bunch of book with an upward force, but she's moving horizontally from maybe from the left to the right. So that's why in this case, work is not done. Similarly, when you are pushing against the wall, if the wall doesn't then you're not doing any work as well. So relating work to energy transfer, work done on an object result in the transfer of energy. So in this case, the lady is pushing, it will be from chemical energy to kinetic energy. So that's why we also use the unit joule for work done. So to break it down even further, one joule is the amount of work done when a force of one Newton is applied over a distance of one meter. So let's have some qu question. For a force to do work, there must be movement in the direction of the force say this diver with a weight of 500 newton, weight is the amount of gravitational force acting on this guy here by the earth, jump off a 20 meter cliff, what's the work done? And the force is the gravity, and he or she is also moving down the cliff. So the diver move in the direction of the force. This is when I can use 500 newton multiplied by 20, which will give me 10,000 joule. So that's the amount of work done by gravity. All right, now let's look at example two. A child waving 300 newton slides down the slope below. What is the work done? So we have two distances to choose from. Either we use 3 meter or 2 meter. And the correct answer is that we should use 2 meter because that's the direction of gravitational force, which is the force that's causing the girl to slide down. So this is why when I'm calculating my work done, I'll use 300 newton multiplied by 2 meter here, which is the vertical height. So that's something that you have to take note so that you know which distance to use. Now there are also time when force is not applied directly at the distance travel. For example, direction of force can be diagonal. The direction of distance travel is in horizontal. So that's when you have to break down the force into its horizontal component using trigonometry. So we know that the force across the horizontal component can be calculated using F cos delta. That's why the work done formula, sometimes it can be F cos delta multiplied by the distance travel. So let's solve a question to understand it. A girl pulls a crate with a force of 90 Newton at an angle of 40 above the horizontal. If the crate is moved 6 meter across the floor, calculate the work done by the girl. In this case, we can't just use 90 Newton as the force because this is not the direction which the crate is moved. Instead, we have to calculate the horizontal component of that force using cos cosine 90 cos 40 will be 68.94 newton and that's the force that we should use in our work done formula we just multiply by the distance and we should be able to get the work done already now let's look into some forms of energy let's start off with gpe it's the energy an object possesses due to its position in a gravitational field when the object is lifted all over it the gpe will change when there's energy change work done will also change. So when calculating GPE, that's the formula we learn in IJCSE physics, MGH. MG is the weight, H is the vertical height. So vertical height is the keyword here. Now let's solve a question. A car of mass 1,200 kg gained an elevation of 10 meter. Calculate the increase in GPE of that car. So we can solve this very easily using MGH. Again, do not use 15 meter. Use 10 meter because that's the vertical height. Just use 1200 multiplied by 9.8 multiplied by 10. And we will get the increase in potential energy of that car. So there are other forms of potential energy. We have elastic potential energy, which is energy that is stored inside 
a compressed material. We also have electric potential energy, which arises from interaction between charged particles in an electric field. Now let's move into kinetic energy. Kinetic energy is the energy an object possesses when they are moving. The faster they move, the more energy they have. The heavier they are, the more energy they have. So that's when we have the formula half mv squared. So how do we derive the kinetic energy formula? We can derive it from one of the equation of motion. Assume that u is zero because we, we just want to calculate the increase in kinetic energy. And then we'll multiply half m for two sides. I'll explain what, why I did that later. And then because we know that f is equal to ma, we can substitute this ma with f. So you will see that ooh, we have the work done formula here, f times s. So that's the energy transfer, and that's how we say that this is the kinetic energy formula. Right, now let's solve another question. This bicycle is 15 kilogram, it's moving at 8 meter per second. I just plug in all the values into the formula, and I would have found out the kinetic energy of the bicycle. Right, so this slide here showcases how GPE can be changed to kinetic energy, and back to GPE again. So initially, the roller coaster gained kinetic energy, and move up the peak, the launch. And as they are at the peak, GP is the highest, kinetic energy is the lowest because it's not moving. And as it descends, GPE will decrease because height decreases. And this energy is converted to kinetic energy to make them move. But as they reach the second peak, the GPE will now be lower than that of the first peak because some energy has been lost through friction. And eventually, they will just slow down and slow down and the ride will stop. Now let's look into another example that involve energy change, a pendulum bob with a mass of 2 kg is lifted to an elevation of 0.1 meter. So we have to calculate its speed when it arrives at the lowest point. So let's find out what's the mgh of it when it's at the highest point. We can calculate that using 2 multiplied by 9.8 times 0.1. So we know that as they move from the highest point to the lowest point, because no energy is lost, all energy shall be converted to kinetic energy. So we can safely say that the kinetic energy is also 1.96 and then I will use the kinetic energy formula, substitute the known value and make the unknown value the subject to find out the velocity of the ball as it reaches the lowest possible point. Now if we were to put two equations together, mgh equal to half mv square, we can cancel the m out and then we will find out that v is equal to square root of 2gh and this equation can be used to calculate the speed of an object falling from height h. So in other words, we don't actually need to go through all these steps. We can just use the same formula and we should be able to find the correct answer here. Now let's look into another concept of energy, energy efficiency. It basically says how effectively energy is being used. We can use this formula here. So for example, for light bulb, only 10% of the energy is converted into useful form, which is light energy. And 90 joule of energy is not used as all. We don't need the heat here. Whereas for a car, it can be 10% for sound energy, 30% for kinetic, 60% for heat. So I'm just giving you an example here. It, not every car is like that. Every car is different. So let's solve a 5 kilogram rock is dropped from a height of 10 meter. As a fall, 20% of the GPE is lost due to air resistance. Calculate the speed of the rock just before it hits the ground. So by putting air resistance into the equation, now we know even though my mgh is 490 joule, not all the energy will be converted into kinetic energy. So that's when I use the efficiency formula to find out that only 392 joules of energy is considered useful energy output. I will let that equal to my kinetic energy. Again, I find out the unknown value V and do some calculation and I would have to be able to find out that the speed of the rock is 12.52 meter per second. So the conservation of energy states that the total energy in the closed system remain constant. So you can see that if my GPE is 490, only 392 joule of energy is converted to kinetic, but it doesn't mean that the rem just lost to nowhere, but it's lost to the air resistance. So by having the conservation of energy in mind, we can always find out where does the energy actually go? So Sankey diagram is a good way for us to see how energy is distributed. So the bigger the arrow, the bigger the proportion of energy allocated to that specific type of energy. Last subchapter of the day, which is the concept of power, is also related to energy, but it is the rate at which work is done or the rate at which energy is transferred. One watt 
it means one joule is transformed per second. So we have other units, kilowatt, megawatts, etc. So let's solve a question real quick. A girl lifts a weight of 80 newton to a height of 5 meters. We know that GPE has increased in 4 seconds. Determine the power exerted during this lift. So the work done here is 80 newton multiplied by 5. And we just have to divide it by 4 to find out what's the power of the interaction here. All right, there's another concept in power called moving power. The formula is power equal to force times velocity. We can derive the formula by using the work done formula, which is F times D. And we know that distance is equal to velocity times time. So we let work done be this term here. And then we substitute this value into the power formula, cancel the time out, and we would have found out that power is equal to F times velocity, which is stated here. So let's solve a work example. A car engine exerts a constant force of 1,500 at a velocity of 20 meters per second. Calculate the power of generator. So to do that, we can just multiply the two values together. All right, so there's another concept called the human power, which is the amount of energy that we human need. So which is around 8.4K to 10.5K, which converts to around 100 watts. So this energy is lost to help us maintain vital functions and perform daily activity. And human power are relatively inefficient because we actually lose more energy than we do work. So because of factors like heat loss and energy needed for various bodily functions. So in short, just to say that we human, we are not very effective species. So that's human power and that's the end of this chapter. Thank you so much for watching. I shall see you in the next video. Goodbye.